a new episode at Economics Design. At Economics Design, we always go back to the fundamentals of any of these token protocols or ecosystems. How the protocols work, what are the economic policies around that, and what are the different incentives to allow these different participants to come together and create this market. Today, I want to talk about the economics of value creation. And this is something that's slightly more moving more towards the next phase in DeFi, beyond DeFi 2.0. Disclaimer, nothing here is investment advice, everything is purely educational, and the opinions here are all my own and doesn't represent anyone or the company. So we'll cover four things today. The first one is the purpose of the market. The second is the value in a market. The third is the economic balance. What is the role of an economist? This is not just an economist in the DeFi space or a token economist, but an economist even in the gaming space or P2E or any other ecosystems that we see today. And I want to give a quick case study on Vesper to show you what that means in context. So what is the purpose of a market? What is a market? A market is really a space for buyers and sellers to come together to trade and transact. That's it. The market is not owned by anyone. It's just a space for people to come in and trade. So what are some public markets we can think about? You can think about countries, a farmer's market, listed companies where people come and trade together, these are public markets. Anyone can come in, enter, and leave. What is an example of a private market? Well, these are small little Facebook groups or small markets that come together, or it could be online social media, small little groups that you create with your friends. So a market is just something in a space where buyers and sellers come together to trade. So in a market, you create value. But what is this value we're talking about? What context of value are we referring to? We're not talking about value extraction, but here we're talking about value creation. So you can look at a lot of general economic papers, especially you can read the book of Why Nations Fail. And one of the core theses is that when you talk about value creation in a market, it helps in long-term growth, it helps in GDP growth, it helps in tokens value accrual, it helps in people getting richer in the game or in the market. And that's value creation. Value extraction is where asymmetrically only benefits one party and this is where you have colonial masters coming in, you have the whole slave trade going on, and that's value extraction. It's a zero-sum game. You take one for the other, and then someone keeps it. Value creation is how do we allow everyone to come together to create additional value that we didn't see before the market was created. So in that context, what is the value cycle we're talking about? Because if we're talking about value creation, value goes through a cycle that then be realized. And how does it work? First, you have value being created. And then value being distributed to the different people in the game and then value will be realized. Once value is realized, you have more capital to create more value. So the long story short of anything we're doing in token economics and economics, it's all about understanding value. How value is being created, is distributed, is being realized. And this is not something too far from your economics 101. In economics 101, instead of value, we look at goods and services being created, distributed and, and consumed. Here, these goods and services are really a representation of value. At the end of the day, token economics or understanding tokens is that token captures this value. It could be any kind of value, but it captures an intrinsic value within your system. And then we design economic policies to allow the value to really run itself in this little closed loop cycle. So how can we translate that into, into economics? How can we translate that into economic policies that we can see in all these different protocols today? Well, when we talk about value creation, we're thinking more of long-term growth. When we're creating value, its value is not realized immediately. Remember, it has to go through a value distribution process. So when we talk about value creation, we're really thinking about long-term growth. What does it look like in five, 10, 15 years and how that value can be realized through this entire process. So when we talk about value creation, we're really talking about long-term growth. The second thing is value distribution. Value distribution is the next step in this game where it's a bit more immediate. So this is where we look at short-term growth, we look at inflation, we look at general little metrics that represent or signifies your ecosystem is growing. So that's value distribution, something a little bit more short-term. And value realization is that you have this thing called nominal value and real value. And what we want to do is to figure out what is the real value accrued to these different active users, to these different people in the game or people in your ecosystem. Then when they have enough capital being accrued, then they can continuously create additional value. So this is a general balance that we want to balance. We can think of long-term growth. Obviously, we always want to think of long-term growth. 
But at the same time, you can only reach long-term growth if you manage to look at short-term growth because that's your small little baby steps to your long-term growth. And also, how do you accrue real value to your users? How do you create a balance system that way? And so, as an economist, you have to figure out how do you balance the long-term growth, short-term growth, and real value accrual to your active users. It's very easy to skew to one side. So, for example, one of the things that I see quite often is that projects are giving a lot of different token inflation to the entire ecosystem. And what is that? That is our value distribution, our short-term growth. And that's, that's okay, it's not wrong. It's that in different stages of your ecosystem, you need different kind of incentives in place. And that's okay. What we want to do is how do we balance between giving a lot of inflation to get everyone involved, but at the same time also think about the long-term growth and get people involved so that there will be capital and value that is being realized can be reinvested into the protocol for long-term growth. So let's take an example of Vesper, which is the Vesper 2.0 when they are looking to update the system, moving from short-term growth towards long-term growth. So quick recap, what is Vesper? Vesper is a portfolio management protocol and a very simple way is for users to deposit your tokens in, you get some of the native tokens in return. So let's say you put ETH in and it helps you to figure out how to optimize your ETH returns and then they give ETH back to you. At the same time, you also get a VSP, which is their internal token. So the native token, then the internal native token, VSP, is used for two reasons. One is for governance, one is for staking. So that's the general idea. We have foreign tokens, which are the ETH and Red BTC and LINK and UNI. We have the internal token, which is VSP. It's a native token. So what is this value creation or what is this value cycle that we have in Vesper? With value creation, we're thinking of something a bit more long-term growth. How do we reinvest in the protocol? How can the protocol continuously grow? And how can the protocol continuously accrue value and create value for anyone that comes into the space? That's long-term growth. The second is value distribution. There's something a bit more of a short-term growth. That is where we have the native tokens, VSP token accrual and token inflation, and they're being distributed to people. And value realization is that all these different tokens will be given to the active users or they could stake it to get some platform fee returns that is given to these users. So this is the general cycle. What VSP has been doing so far or what Vespa has been doing so far, because they just started not too long ago, is that they've been focusing very much on value distribution. And you can see that in the entire token allocation in the system. Right now, it's a lot of the different platform fees being accrued will be converted to the tokens and redistributed back to the active users, hence value realization. One of the things that could be improved in the entire whole scheme of game is to shift the conversation and shift the plans toward long-term growth, towards value creation. And what is value creation? That could be, for example, treasury management. That could be partnership management. That could be different kind of operations, admin, better marketing, better improvement of the development and the UI, UX or other services and products to be offered. So that is a little bit more long-term growth. It's a bit more of building the infrastructure so that the value realized can be realized in different forms, hence creating value as a result. I know I use the word value a lot, but it's key to every token model that we talk about. What is your value growth model? What is your value cycle? And at this stage of your protocol, are we talking about the short-term growth or are we starting to think a lot more long-term, thinking about long-term growth? I know it's very difficult to get people to talk about long-term growth because our brains are very focused on the now and we want returns now today. But it's very important to also think that when we invest in long-term growth, the compounding effect, the compounding interest rate that you get from focusing on long-term growth can realize in much bigger sums when time comes. So this is the general idea that I want to share where Vespa is now moving away from just short-term growth, but looking at the long-term growth, looking at how do we shift the economics towards continuously creating value in the long run. And this is very important as ecosystems continuously grow, as ecosystems, as DeFi economics start to change. We are no longer just thinking about, oh, we just have token inflation and then we can just give tokens up to people. No, it needs to be using tokens as an incentive model to drive future economic growth and future value growth. So specifically, how is this done? It's done in six ways. The first one is to reduce withdrawal fee. As much as withdrawal fee can add to some aspects of revenue, when we reduce the withdrawal fee, it helps people to move funds a lot better, a lot easier, and that is a value creation in a perspective. And this 
withdrawal fee will be reduced for people swapping within the entire protocol. The second thing is increasing the yield fee. And this is something that we see, it's quite competitive if you look at all the other asset portfolio management or asset protocols where the yield fees is about 20%. And then the third one is the fee allocation. So the revenue being generated right now, because it's focusing on short-term growth, is focusing on value distribution. It's just given out all to the users. But right now, as we want to develop the long-term growth, we want to start accruing value for the future and for the future products available and future users, then fees will also be generated and allocated to this segment of the space. So it could be marketing, it could be operations, it could be partnerships and stuff like that. The fourth one is to replenish VSP reserves. So our analysis, we found out that VSP returns help to increase user behaviors towards adding more capital into the protocol. So what we want to do is for the fees being generated, part of it will be allocated to replenish the VSP reserves. The protocol currently has a budget for it and we're just extending the budget for a couple more years. Hence, long-term value creation. Number five, we are looking at a multi-currency treasury. So as you understand, treasury is kind of like your insurance in your protocol. And what we want to do with multi-currency treasury is to increase the assets available so that you don't have one big negative shock to the system. And lastly, the treasury will be maintained through an algorithm. And this algorithm is quite easy. It just switches between keeping it in stable coins or keeping it in that native multi-currency treasury that we want. And this helps to balance between any kind of shocks. And we're looking at long-term growth by reducing the risk through treasury management and optimizing your yields and optimizing value creation through everything else in the recommendation. Today, we talk about DeFi 2.0. And DeFi 2.0 is really trying to create new mechanisms that the protocol can control and incentivize users to behave differently. But we haven't really talked about the economics 2.0, where the economics is really starting to evolve. The economics change as the stage of your ecosystem and stage of your, your protocol is at. And so I want to have a bit more conversation around this. And the entire change, the long story short, is that we're moving towards long-term growth. We're looking towards value creation in the long run. So that's it for today. I hope that gives you some idea and some basic concept of what to do next. This Vesper protocol and this Vesper redesign is done by Economics Design. And so I wanted to share that with you as well to give you an update of how do we apply everything that we have researched and learned and understood into an active protocol so that you can start applying this practitioner knowledge and help change the space and help improve the space. Hope that helps. Until then, I'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you so much for staying throughout this entire video. If you're interested to learn more and you want to join the community, do check out our Discord, check out our Academy, and you get to watch these videos for free as well without any ads. And also grab the book that I've talked about earlier on. The book summarizes a lot of what we're trying to build, what we're trying to design, and the different aspects that can be changed during the entire design process. We also just launched Econteric. Econteric is really economics plus esoteric because this space is so complicated and so difficult. What we want to do is to make it easier for anyone to come and learn and be part of this system. So in Econteric, we are breaking down the different analytics and different data to give you more insights to understand the robustness from a very fundamental level of the health of this ecosystem. So check out econteric.com and I'll see you there. Bye.